Hi, I've always wanted to start a video like that. Always wonder what that would look like. Welcome to the third episode of Following Heart. For those who haven't seen it before, Following Heart is a three-part series um, about women who are unable to do what they're passionate about through the use of technology. We partnered with Skype, who gave us the budget to go out and make these documentaries, and we spent the last six months traveling to three different countries to meet three different individuals uh, and tell their stories. And I'm kind of sad that it's coming to an end. This series is definitely different, and the reason we decided to do it was to challenge ourselves, to see if we could tell a story in a different way, and it certainly has been challenging. Uh, we've learned a lot along the way. Um, but ultimately it's been an amazing experience and so I'm kind of sad that it's over but I'm excited to be sharing the last one with you. Finn is currently traveling so he can't be here. However, slightly ironically, I have him on Skype and he would like to say a few things. Finn, do you have anything to add about the last episode of Following Heart? I'm kind of emotional that this is the last ever episode of the Following Heart series. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for the launch. I'm super, super excited to be sharing this on Jack's Gap. We had a lot of fun making this one in Canada and uh, enjoy the episode. So, without further ado, I would like to share the last episode of Following Heart with you. Um, just a last note to say thank you for being patient and understanding while we played around with this new type of video. Here it is, the last episode of Following Heart, featuring Leslie Watts. I wonder if it's somehow tied to my interest in psychology. I'm interested in not necessarily beautiful faces, interesting faces. I feel that a portrait's definitely not done if I don't get a sense that there's a person in there looking back at me. I love the illusion that I can create with paint. I, I really try to make things look three-dimensional. I'm not interested in being a copyist. I don't want to copy photographs. I don't take it as a compliment if somebody tells me that my work looks photographic. Um, I do understand that frequently people mean it as a compliment, but if it's somebody who knows anything at all about art and they say my work looks photographic, I take that as a criticism. I'm Leslie Watts. I live in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and I'm an artist. So when I grew up, we had lots of art supplies in the house and my mom had a paint box with oil paints in it and she used to paint during the summer and my grandfather made paint boxes for my sister and me when, when we were young. So I think I just sort of always figured that it was something I would do. I use two different um, techniques. I use acrylic paint and egg tempera paint. Egg tempera is an extremely old medium. And before oil paint, artists used egg tempera. And the beauty of egg tempera is that it just seems to last. They've got, they've got egg tempera paintings that they've taken out of Egyptian tombs that still look brilliant. So right now I'm working on the portrait of Emily and when I photographed her for this portrait I actually had her pose inside a picture frame so that I could have her hands coming out the bottom of the picture frame. But the problem with this was when Emily posed part of her elbow was cut off. So I found it was really useful to get on Skype with her and then I could actually direct her. Could you please just move your arm like this and hold it over slightly so I can see the shape there. Yeah, that angle um, turned to me just slightly more, just very, very slightly. That's perfect. Not quite that much. Go back to where you were when I said that's perfect. A lot of times she's working on a project, I'm working on a painting, and we'll just sit and chat while, while we're working, and it's really fun. It feels like a visit. It feels like she's right there in my studio with me. I told them that Mark wanted to make a video of me painting and yelling at the dogs. I don't think so. I've been trying to be nice. I've been trying to hide that evil side of my personality. <laughs> 
On days that I'm teaching, I, I really like that because I have students coming to my house and they take private lessons from me and I teach in groups of two or three people usually. It's a lovely sort of, it's almost like a social thing for me in the middle of the day because I'm isolated most of the time and they learn how to become better painters and then when they finish a painting I can just see how happy they are. They're just thrilled and it, that makes me feel really excited. Is that the goal? Is that the end goal to be a successful artist in your own right, to be selling artwork, to have it in art galleries? Is that the goal? I think that I'm, I'm not so much after fame and fortune um, as I am after a sense that I belong in the world of artists. I, I never wanted to be just a, a small town artist. I wanted my work to stand up against, you know, whoever you can throw at it. And I realized that I'm not a cutting edge artist. I don't do um, the kind of work that is going to make headlines. I'm, I'm very traditional in my approach. In spite of the fact that I'm using photographs, the way that I paint is a very traditional way. So I, I don't expect to become famous. What I would really like to be is respected. The nice balance for me now is having enough money coming in that I know that I'm a couple of months ahead, I can keep painting, but what could be better than being able to sit in my studio and paint all day? It's like, it's like playing, it's, it's fantastic. And I feel like, wow, like all the money in the world would not possibly replace that feeling of making something from nothing and, and thinking, wow, that looks pretty good. <laughs>